Hi, my name is Noel Davis with World Composting, and today I have an exciting project that I have finally finished. It's been a long time coming, but I finally finished a shaking sorter machine that I've been wanting to build for a while. I've had the materials, some of them are repurposed from other projects, and some of them I actually had, did have to buy. So this isn't a free project typically that you'd work on, but I wanna show you what I have and explain how it works, and we'll go from there. If you have any questions, of course, leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. So let's go and take a look. Okay, so here is my sorting machine. Now, I apologize if this is a little shaky. This is all being handheld. But what I have here on the top is I have aluminum that has been perforated. So this is uh, 1 8 and this is quarter inch holes. And I'm using aluminum because it's really smooth. You can just rub your hand right across it. You're not going to catch on anything. It's not like hardware cloth that you find at the store that's sort of like sandpaper. For the sheets of perforated aluminum, this is what they look like. This is a small sample that they sent me. There is one side that is rough and another side that is smooth as they puncture these holes with a bit. And because of that, you want to make sure you use the smooth side instead of the rough side, which will rip apart your worm. So this is what it looks like though. It's a real thin sheet. I forget what it is, it's like an eighth inch thick or something like that, or I'm sorry, 16th inch thick. And it's still pretty sturdy you know, hard to bend. Um, I figured if I went any thicker, it'd be kind of overdoing it in a lot of ways. So, but this is the sheet that I bought. The sheets that I have down here are two feet by two feet for each sheet. So each sheet is two by two feet by two feet or 24 inches by 24 inches. And that's what I'm using. I, I went overboard maybe a little bit. I probably could have gone with maybe one one foot deep and two feet wide for the top part and maybe the same for the or the uh, two by two for the bottom part because that's where most of your material is going to fall through not as much as going to fall through on the one eighth inch screen so but this is what the one eighth inch looks like up close so if you have any questions of course before i got this leave a leave a comment and i'll see if i can find it again i think i bought it off of ebay so it you know it's not something that's necessarily going to be there all the time now if you can't tell the idea behind this design is really the Brockwood worm sifter, or uh, I guess compost sifter is what he calls it. And he sells it to people that, uh, that mass produce worms as a way of sifting through their material. And I basically took his ideas and made it into something that's a lot cheaper. Since it's $2,000 for his all steel version, this one's made of wood. It has the most expensive component are these perforated aluminum screens in here, but the rest of it is fairly inexpensive especially since I had a lot of these parts already on hand such as the wood and you know I already had a sawzall and you know a tarp and things like that so most of this and screws obviously to pull it together most of this I already had and that's really why it was affordable except for these screens so let's go and talk about how this works all right so from back here you have your sawzall that's attached to the screen and it's going to move it back and forth. So it can move this back and forth when I plug it in. I'm going to show it working in a little bit here. I've got this off the back and these traps holding it down so that way it doesn't just shake itself because obviously the screen weighs quite a bit. Underneath the screen I have the tarp and there is a hole in there right there if you can see there is a hole through the tarp and that empties out into a bin down below. This is what I currently have in this bin. Oh, I gotta rotate it to get it out of here. This is through the first screenings that I have. Looks like pretty decent material here. Nice and light and airy. Small pieces, you know. And that goes right under here. And I rotate it this way since the hole goes that way as well. So, then, I'm gonna walk through the light here for just a second. At the end here, it just falls right off and it comes into this tray. So these are the big chunks and hopefully worms that will not get caught up in this screen and they'll go all the way down to the end here. Now I know some of them do have on the end a piece right here to block stuff from going, but I don't have anything shooting off. I'm not running it that quickly. So that is the basic design. Now as far as a little bit more details, I wanted to make this adjustable. So that's where you see these red ropes. So these ropes are going down here and they are actually anchored on the bottom of this with a nail. And it's re resting more on the frame than on the nail. So that way it's, that's how it's being held up. It can rock back and forth because this is loose. I notched the wood here 
So that way it wouldn't be rubbing against the top and eventually wear itself out and fall. Then, because I wanted it to be adjustable, I made this makeshift cleat out of two screws that I drilled in at angles. So that way it's kind of like a cleat like on a boat. Now I, I put them a little bit too far apart because I want to make sure they didn't hit, but it holds this up, but it makes it where it's fully adjustable so I can drop this side down or raise it up if depending on the material I'm running through. So, and I did that on all four corners here. So all of these have the same exact type of design. So now for the frame, I'm gonna drop down here. I have this, I went a little bit overboard on this, but partially because I had the wood left, wood left over from another project. This is a, uh, instead of a two by four, I used a two by eight. Um, it adds a little bit more stability here on the bottom. And also at the same time, it allows me to put you know, some extra screws in and also I put these big bolts in here. So these are, uh, I think two and a half inch decking screws. And then I've got three inch decking screws holding this, this front board on. And by the way, this is all recycled pallet wood, these, these boards right here. So a lot of this is recycled wood that I already had. Now on the back end here, I had two pieces here because I wanted a little bit more support on this side, knowing that the Sawzall was going to be attached. And then I have these two by fours running off and attached to another two by eight to hold up the Sawzall. Now, the reason why I don't have boards around this and have this anchored down with that is that I don't know if I'm gonna have to replace this and I don't know if I'm gonna to wanna to keep this. This was my first idea was to use a Sawzall as I've seen other people do it in their videos. And I have the blade anchored in place. I drilled a hole through it and then ran this bolt through the blade this piece right here, um, I originally had held on with these deck screws. It started cracking and it was also ripping apart over here. So I had to use these bolts here to really hold it in. And these are um, much bigger. And then I still kept the screws underneath so that way to get a little bit more support. So that is how I have this set up. Um, actually, let me go over one more thing here. The tarp, I didn't just screw the tarp in directly. I put these wood blocks over it so that way it would have a little bit more support and wouldn't rip apart. Um, at least that's, that's the plan. I didn't want this to just pull right on the, a single section of the tarp because the nails or a blade is going to rip right through that. So that is how this is set up and structured. If you have questions, please let me know. If you want anything in more detail, also, please let me know. So let's get this started. I want to show you how this works. All right, so the first part of this is I already have this set up ready to go. All I do is I place a battery, and if you have a plug-in one, you just unplug it. But I'm using this to hold it down as far as the trigger. And as you can tell, I don't have it up too high here, but it's enough to kind of shake it a little bit. And this is only moving about an inch. So now I've got my bin here. Put it on the other side here so you can see. I'm just going to slowly dump this on. material is falling through and there's a little bit coming out at the end. Now this won't work for really wet material. See, like right here, these are breaking apart a little bit, but not too much. But what's great about this is, hold on, let me grab a glove here. As well as going, I can sort of shake them a little bit. And you can see there's some worms on here that are caught. But a lot of them are making it down into here, because trust me, there's a ton of worms in here. There's a couple of them right here. You probably can't see at the top. But there's some worms down here, so let me pop that battery out, we'll take a look. Alright, so we've got the battery out. Let's just come in here and take a look real quick and see how this did. So again, I'm going to do a freehand here, so it might be a little bit rock, rocky, but 
just so you know. All right, so here we go. As you can see, there are some worms that are getting caught in here a little bit. They look a little bit dry. I think this bin was a little bit too dry in that right now, but there's a couple worms that are stuck in here and on the side over here and a couple of them even up here on the uh, 1 8 inch screen but if you shake it typically stuff kind of falls all the way down now we get down here to the bottom let's just take a look in here actually let me pull this out let's get this into more light here it's a little better so this is kind of wet material down here i am seeing some worms normally i would have gloves on but i didn't have time to grab them so as you can see i mean Here's a worm right here. Pieces of food that's left over. Let me throw that off to the side. Another worm right here. Now these, this material is quite dry, so I'm not surprised. They're not really lively, the worms. Hopefully they'll get a little bit more lively once I put them in a new bin with some more food. And uh, this right here fell through. As you can tell, this is a big chunk. Another big chunk right here, kind of. So more food. Another piece of food right there, but you can tell a lot of the worms did make it through this okay. Now, let's take a look at the material underneath. That might be a different question. That's the real question is, can we sort this material out so we don't have to constantly sort through it? Now, as you can see right here, there's a big mound underneath here. There's still some more stuff that's gonna fall through here. The tarp isn't quite perfect, but it is what it is, and eventually I might put a bar, just as you can see here, across this section right here, and have a tarp for this, this section and this section because they're different sizes. So, let me just pull this out a little bit here. Unfortunately, I can't... Well, let me see if I can get a little bit more light here. There we go. So, as you can see, this material is nice and light and airy. There's a worm right here, so there are some worms getting through, but hopefully not as many as uh, are going through the other material. If... if if I find that too many worms are getting through, you can always resort this again and again, too. That's what's great about this. So, you know, here's a worm right here. Throw him off to the side. Worm right here. So I might have to sort this one more time, or maybe I'd have to eventually do it where I, uh, I run it through and then kind of stop it at the, uh, the quarter inch in some way. But uh, just to give you an idea of what this does do, though, I mean, like, you can see that this is all nice loose material that's ready to be used in a garden. This isn't quite fully composted, but you know, this is, this spins a little bit early, but I wanted to show you what this looks like. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to be running a lot more stuff through this to hopefully sort out some of my bins because I've had them going way too long for some of them. Now this will not work if the material is real wet. If the material is real wet, it's just going to just sit on here, clog up and just slowly move all the way to the end, but it does work. So I hope you like this video. Please ask any questions that you have and like and subscribe to my channel if you're interested in more videos. And if you have any suggestions for how to get this work to work better, let me know. I know that this, this device right here is sort of iffy with the Sawzall. And I have debated on a couple other things. Like I can't turn it up much more than that, otherwise it shakes too much. So I have debated on other ways to, to power this with like a drill or something like that. But, you know, let me know in the comments if you have other suggestions for how this could work or ways that I can make it a little bit better. You know, I'm always looking, I'm, I'm not the expert on building things like this, but uh, there's always somebody that has some great suggestions out there on how to do something better than what, I, what you're doing. You should always listen to them. So thank you for watching. And again, please like and subscribe to my channel.